Hello there. Honestly, it doesn't matter whether Liz Truss succeed Boris Johnson or Rishi Sunak. London will continue to be driven by ideology in the future. Since Boris Johnson's withdrawal, there has been hope in Paris, Brussels and Berlin that one thing should be possible again. A more relaxed relationship with Great Britain. Well, I didn't have that hope, by the way. Of course, not as closely as in the EU back then, but, but definitely friendly and pragmatic in the best sense of the word. Hilarious. However, that would presuppose that Johnson's successor is no longer so strongly guided by the Brexit ideology. But as it turns out, the opposite is to be expected. The contest between Secretary of State Liz Truss and former Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak is nothing short of a feast for ideologues and nostalgics. Hardly a day goes by when the two would-be prime ministers don't praise the benefits of Britain's exit from the EU. Yep, I'm really waiting for some. The party members who decide on Johnson's successor are incredibly well received. Britain, uh, Brexit is and will remain the political cement that holds the Tories together. No other topic is so unanimous. So it's no wonder that polls show that Truss has the best chance of becoming party leader and prime minister. Unlike Sunak, she was already one of, the, of, the, of those in, in Johnson's cabinet who called for a hard line on Brussels. And even now, she leaves no doubt that she's willing to take the Brexit dispute with the EU to the extreme. When it comes to Northern Ireland, Truss wants to push through Johnson's proposed legislation that would allow London to overturn the Brexit deal with the EU. Only one-sided. While Sunak says he'll do the same, Truss just seems more believable on the issue. The consequences of leaving the EU will determine the term of office of the next Prime Minister, as will the consequences of the pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The most urgent problem is the cost of living crisis. As everywhere in Europe, the cost of living has risen sharply in Great Britain. However, at 10.1%, the inflation rate is significantly higher than in Germany or France. For the autumn, the Bank of England expects a further increase to 13%, and we meanwhile even at a drop. Truss and Sunak have identified tax cuts as a recipe against the looming economic crisis. This is understandable because there are few more popular among the Tories. The promise of a lean state that does everything to ensure that citizens and companies can develop freely has been the core of conservative economic policy since Margaret Thatcher. And Truss, which presents herself as a kind of reincarnation of the Iron Lady, is therefore promising immediate tax cuts. Her calculus is, if the citizens have more money at their disposal, they will spend it and thus stimulate growth. The only problem is that the more the demand for consumer goods increases, the more the prices rise, which would fuel inflation even further. This is exactly what Sunak warns about. He believes that tax cuts only make sense once the economy is growing again. It's a pragmatic approach, but one that is apparently not able to win a majority under the Tories. Well, a lot can happen before Johnson's successor is decided on September 5th. But as of now, Truss is the clear favorite. It's quite possible that she will be less guided by ideology in office and act pragmatically instead. There's always hope. However, you shouldn't get your hopes up too high on that one. I won't. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.